Before you begin the installation, please read all the safety precautions provided within the ConvertiLift written instruction manual. Thank you for ordering the ConvertiLift, a product that will provide many benefits to using your hot tub. For the purpose of this video, the service panel is the side where your spa pack is located. The opposite side we will call the rear panel, and the others will be the right and the left side panels. Before beginning the installation, you need to choose the direction of the cover and where to install the power supply. We recommend having the cover move away from the service panel toward the rear panel. This eliminates having to remove the mounting brackets for future service to the spa, along with allowing easy access to your control panel when the cover is open. Also, be sure to leave about 9 inches of space for your cover. Choosing how to power your system helps determine where to install the power supply. Direct wiring to your spa pack is most preferred because it eliminates having to run an external cord from your home, but it should only be done by a licensed electrician or certified spa technician. The other alternative is running a dedicated 110 volt line from your home's electrical panel and wiring it directly to the power supply using a waterproof junction box. This should only be done by a licensed electrician. There are two choices on where to install the power supply. Direct wired installation requires you to install the power supply behind the service panel and within 5 feet of the spa pack. The dedicated 110 volt line allows the power supply to be installed behind the service panel or the rear panel. Now that you have chosen the direction of your cover and where the power supply will be located, you are ready to begin. Step 1. Turning off the power to the spa and positioning the cover. If you are installing the power supply behind the service panel, turn off the power to your hot tub and keep it off until the installation is complete. Then, position the cover squarely on the spa. Step 2. Installing the control box and power supply. To install the control box and the power supply, remove the cabinet panel where you have chosen to install this equipment. First, install the control box at any elevated position, keeping it protected from any potential groundwater and secure it using the 12 inch zip tie provided. Also, do not position it on any stereo equipment. Then, using a 6 inch zip tie, Secure the antenna also in an elevated location. Next, plug the attached cord on the power supply into the red colored pigtail on the control box. Then plug the input end of the 5.5 foot power cord fully into the power supply. The power supply is adaptable for both 60 Hz for US electrical systems along with 50 Hz used in many international countries. Position the power supply anywhere in the cabinet leaving the power cord within reach. If the spa is being delivered after the installation, it's a good idea to secure the power supply with a 12 inch zip tie so it won't move during transport. Step 3. All extension cables are directional and should be installed first. Both actuators have two pin connections. Plug the matching ends of them into each of the two pin pigtail connections on the control box. Then attach the three pin pigtail on the control box to the matching key switch extension cable that also has a three pin connection. Then leave all cables accessible with the panel remaining off. Step 4. Installing the key switch assembly. The key switch assembly includes the key switch, the keys, cover plate, large hex nut, and a pigtail connection cord. Check that the wires and the rear lock nut are secure. Do not remove the adhesive paper behind the plate. If any wires have become unconnected, attach the two white wires to either of the two center connections labeled 1 and 8, and the green and black wires to either outside connections labeled 2 and 7. The plate should be installed on the side you would normally enter your spa that will also include an actuator. 
Install the key switch anywhere from 60 to 80% from the end of the cabinet where the cover ends up and at a height convenient for the user to operate. Installation requires you to drill a hole in the cabinet, but before drilling, check to see that there is no obstruction behind the panel. This may require removing the cabinet panel. If necessary, use the template provided. To use, first cut along the dotted line, then tape section A at the bottom of the shell coping and B along the top of the cabinet. This helps you determine the horizontal position of the hole. Be certain the hole is at least one and a half inches from the top of the cabinet, then mark the position of the hole with a pencil. Then drill the hole using a one and one eighth inch hole saw. If there is a removable corner panel, you may be able to simply hand feed the cable from the control box, then grab the cable and pull it through the hole. If you are not able to hand feed the cable, then reattach the panel with the hole already drilled and snake a cable rod through the hole toward the control box. Securely tape the key switch cable to the cable rod, then pull the rod through the hole until you can grab onto the cable. We recommend using cable running rods. We make available a package of three, three foot rods that can be screwed together to extend up to nine feet. Now connect the key switch pigtail to the extension cable. Place the key switch through the hole onto the cabinet and secure it with one screw. Then make certain it is level and secure with the second screw. Step five, installing the actuator cables. The actuator cables need to end up on each side panel, above the point where the motor end of the actuator will be installed, which is seven inches from the rear of the cabinet and 12 inches down from the top. Since the mounting bracket is four inches in height, the target area for positioning the cable is anywhere between five inches to 12 inches down from the top and 10 inches from the rear of the cabinet. To begin, you need to run the actuator cables to the rear corners of the SPA, where each mounting bracket and actuator will be installed. The best two ways to run the cables are snaking them through the cabinet interior or behind the cabinet panels. To snake the cables, first remove the corner panels or the rear panel. Then use a cable running rod to feed them to where the actuator extension cables are. Just leave enough to grab onto. Next, go to the opposite end and with tape, secure the end of the rod to the actuator cable. Then from the other side, pull the rod through the spa until you can capture the taped end of the extension cable. Repeat this on the other side. This procedure can also be done with a broom handle, just not as easily. The other preferred way is removing the side panels and running the cables behind them. Even if the interior is fully foamed, cables are thin enough to go between the insulation and the panel. Whichever method you use, the cables need to then be positioned into the target area and the recommended ways to do it are either behind the corner panel or through a hole in the cabinet. If your spa has removable corner panels, remove them and position the cable within the target area and reinstall the corner panel to secure it. The second way is drilling a 5 8 inch hole in the spa and snaking the cable through it. If your spa doesn't have a corner panel or you can't or don't want to drill a hole in your cabinet, a third choice is running the cables along the bottom perimeter of the spa and then running the cable up a U-shaped channel. The downside to this method is the possibility of the cable becoming loose and getting damaged. Step six, installing the mounting bracket. To determine the location of the bracket, measure 22 inches from the furthest end of your spa cabinet and pencil mark the spot. Then check to see if there is a solid structure to screw into. If necessary, install supports to the spa frame. Usually short 2x4 material works fine. The mounting bracket must sit flush on the cabinet. If it doesn't, remove any protruding screws and add a wood spacer to level the area off. Then, position the bracket at your pencil line, flush under the spa coping. Make sure the safety stop is at the top and rear of the spa. Hold the bracket in position and pre-drill two holes with a drill bit to prevent splitting the wood. Then, secure these holes with wood screws. 
Secure with a minimum of 8 screws, but more is always better. For spas with steel frames, use a metal drill bit, and then the wood screws will work just fine. Spas with large radius corners greater than 12 inches and up to 16 inches require the prior attachment of an optional extended bracket for added structural support. Step 7. Installing the cover plate. Position the cover plate over the mounting bracket and secure with two machine screws using a handheld Phillips head screwdriver. Step 8. Installing the V-Bar. First, slide the V-Bar over the two bosses on the mounting bracket with the short side closest to the rear of the spa. Then place a 2-inch black metal washer on the mounting bracket boss furthest from the rear of the spa and attach with a short half-inch hex bolt. Repeat steps 6 through 8 on the other side, which includes installing mounting brackets, cover plate, and V-Bar. Step 9. Installing the swing arm. First, hold a short half-inch hex bolt in your hand and place a locking washer on it. Then add a black machine washer followed by a Teflon washer. Then, place a separate Teflon washer over the boss at the end of the spa and position the swing arm on it with the flat extended plate pointing down and then rest the swing arm down. Now install the hex bolt assembly by hand keeping washers even, then firmly tighten with a half-inch wrench until the lock washer is compressed. Step 10. Installing the vacuum seal and converter lift adjustable brackets. First, raise the swing arm and then slide a vacuum seal adjustable bracket over it with the flat extension towards the rear of the spa and the smiley-faced hole at the bottom. Then, Slide on a converter lift adjustable bracket with the flat triangular plate positioned furthest from the spa and the short side toward the rear of the spa. Leave both brackets unsecured. Step 11. Sliding the crossover bar onto the swing arm. Slide the longer side of a crossover bar through the upper clamp and the shorter side over the swing arm. Then lay the longer side on the cover. Position the upper clamp over the slit in the cover flap and leave crossover bar unsecured. If the cover is less than 78 inches long, you will have to cut both swing arms with a tube cutter for the upper clamp to sit over the cover slit. If you cut the swing arms, be sure they remain visible through the pre-drilled holes in the crossover bar. Step 12. Sliding extension tube into the crossover bar. The extension tube is 40 inches long. Put a pencil mark at the 20-inch center point, which will assist you later in the installation. Then slide it partially into the crossover bar and leave it unsecured. Step 13. Installing the second crossover bar. Now slide the longer side of the second crossover bar through the second upper clamp and then into the extension tube. Just as was done on the first side, position the upper clamp over the slit in the cover. Check that the pencil mark on the extension tube is visible and centered. Leave all parts unsecured. If cover width is less than 66 inches, you will need to cut both sides of the crossover bars. Step 14. Installing the second swing arm. First place a Teflon washer over the boss. Then slide both the vacuum seal and converter lift brackets onto the swing arm. Then slide it into the crossover bar and just like on the other side, do not secure it. And then position it on the boss and secure with the same hardware as before. Step 15. Installing the rear support bar. Insert the long side of the rear support bar into the back sleeve of the cover so that it is parallel and flat against the cover. Then position the other side of the rear support bar against the outer side of the VSL adjustable bracket and align the two holes. Secure the first hole with a hex bolt and nylon lock nut with a 7 16 inch wrench. Then check that the long side is still sitting flat against the cover and the short side is parallel with the swing arm. Then secure the second hole. Repeat on the other side.
Step 16, Installing Lower Clamps. To install the lower clamps, first lift the cover slightly and slide the rubber pad into the cover slit, putting it as close to the cover fold as possible. Then loosely install both nylon lock nuts. It is strongly recommended to use a wood clamp. Hand squeezing each side without a wood clamp can work, but it doesn't guarantee the cover will not move at a later date. Securely tighten the lock nuts with a 7 16 inch wrench. Repeat this procedure on the other side. Step 17, installing the handle. Slide the handle fully into the crossover bar that is on the same side as the key switch and leave unsecured. The handle will act as a convenient robe holder. Step 18, securing the crossover bars to the swing arms. Before securing the crossover bars, it is now most important to check that the cover sits evenly on all sides. Then, measure the distance from the end of the open tube on the swing arm to its connection point on the crossover bar. Make certain the distance on both sides is exactly the same. Shift the cover if necessary. Also, make certain both sides are running parallel and that there is clear even space between the swing arm and the cover so it opens without any obstruction. First, pre-drill holes in the crossover bar with a 532nd inch drill bit, then secure it to the swing arm with self-tapping screws. Repeat this on the other side. Step 19. Securing upper clamps to the crossover bar. To secure the upper clamp, Pre-drill holes with a 532nd inch drill bit and then secure with self-tapping screws into the crossover bar and the handle on one side. Then repeat on the other side. Step 20. Securing the crossover bars to the extension tube. Before securing the crossover bar to the extension tube, be sure to use a hard protective material to protect from potential damage to the cover. Damage is not covered under the warranty. Pre-drilling holes is always a good idea. Step 21. Installing the linear actuators. To install the linear actuators, first slide a bushing onto the long half-inch hex bolt, and then slide the bolt into the bottom hole of the actuator with the cable pointing down. Then, position it over the bottom of the V-bar and secure it using a half-inch wrench. Position the other side of the actuator over the adjustable bracket plate, line up the holes, and slide in the clevis pin. Then secure it with the retainer clip to the first notch. Then attach the actuator extension cable to the actuator pigtail and leave a short loop to prevent rainwater from running directly to the actuator motor end. Step 22, securing the adjustable brackets to the swing arms. First, secure the converter lift bracket to the swing arm by installing self-tapping screws into the two top holes. The bottom holes will be secured later. Then secure the vacuum seal bracket with a self-tapping screw into the one accessible hole. The non-accessible top hole will not require a screw and the bottom holes will be secured later. Repeat steps 21 and 22 on the other side by installing actuator and securing brackets. Step 23. Testing the converter lift system by plugging in the power supply. This simply requires attaching the plug from the power cord to any approved outdoor extension cord and plugging that cord into any GFCI protected outlet. But before you power the actuators, it is important to make certain there are no cover straps attached. Activating the actuators with a strap attached can cause damage to the spa or the cover and neither are covered under the warranty. Once the power supply is plugged in, use the key switch to raise the cover. 
If it operates, the components and your installation are positive up to this point. Do not close the cover, leave it in the open position. This is not a recommended installation, but it's ideal for testing your system prior to it being permanently installed. Step 24. Securing the bottom holes and the adjustable brackets. With the cover up, use self-tapping screws to secure all lower holes in the bottom of the vacuum seal and the converter lift adjustable brackets. Then repeat this step on the other side. Step 25. How to properly close the vacuum seal cover. The patented vacuum seal cover has a bottom hinge that helps prevent heat loss, saving you money along with allowing you to open your cover in one motion from up to 100 feet away. But to close the vacuum seal cover, you need to guide it down by leading the short side forward and keeping it from getting stuck on any pillows or controls that sit above the spa coping. Also, releasing the key pauses the motion, allowing you to adjust the flap and the skirt if necessary. Closing the cover at the spa is also beneficial for safety purposes. Step 26. Installing plastic caps and plugs. To give your spa that finished look, install small caps on all self-tapping screws, medium caps on mid-size bolts, and large caps on large bolts. Plus, be sure to put the rubber sleeve on the safety stop, medium-sized plugs on open ends of rear support bar, and large plug on the side of the crossover bar that does not have a handle. Step 27. For converter lift systems with remote controls. First check to see if your remote has a live battery by pushing a button to see if the lights turn on. To program the remote, press and hold the red button connected to the control box and the up button on your remote simultaneously for approximately 3 seconds. To test the remote, press the up button twice, about a half second apart. As a backup, program and test the second remote too. The remote will open your cover from up to 100 feet away, providing convenience, but it is not recommended to use it to close the vacuum seal cover. For safety reasons, it requires that you press and hold the button down. This often causes a stuttering motion along with weakening the battery. Since the cover requires that you guide it down, the key switch is the recommended way of closing the cover. If you are not ready to permanently power your system at this time, Make certain to close any open cabinet panels. Step 28. Powering the converter lift system. There are two ways to power the converter lift. To direct wire it to the spot pack, you first need to cut the power cord, then attach female spade connectors, and attach them to a 110 volt non-switched source on the spot pack. Remember, this should only be done by a licensed electrician or certified spa technician. This is the most attractive method because it eliminates having to run any electrical cord from your home, and it only draws 2 amps of current, so it shouldn't interfere with the spot pack's permitted amperage draw. Another method is running a dedicated 110 volt line from the main panel in your home or from the external subpanel for your spa. Then cut the lines of your power cord and splice and connect them to the 110 volt line within a weatherproof box. This should only be done by a licensed electrician in accordance with local codes. Step 29, the final test. Test the key switch again and the remote if you have one. If all works well, congratulations, your installation is successful. Enjoy your hot tub and remember to complete the warranty information card.